Today we're going to be making a simple shader to have a dissolving in and out effect for your materials. I'm only influencing the body material here, so the eyes and the teeth stay behind. You can use the same shader for all these different materials and have your enemies or your player character or whatever you want to have fade in and out in this manner. It'll work. So we're here in a new empty Unity project. If you want to download this project to either just use the shader from it or compare the shader graph that we're going to be making to the one that you're making, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download the entire project file. But anyway, let's get started. We're going to start by creating a new graph shader. I'm using HDRP. This should work fine in URP as well. Uh, but we're going to be working with a lit shader graph and we'll call this the dissolve shader opening that up before we get into any of the fancy dissolving stuff you're going to want to be able to supply some textures to this shader because the default shader that you're using in unity probably has a lot of that already set up if you're making a custom shader uh, you need to put that in yourself so we're going to start by adding some properties here and we're going to add a 2d texture and we'll call the first one base color then we'll also add a 2d texture for the normal map for the metallic map for the emission map and for the roughness map just your usual pbr maps right so we're going to drag all of those into our graph here and we can simply drag off those and say we want to sample those textures and then connect them up into our outputs and then we can make them a little bit smaller so they're easier to work with and we're going to copy this over a fair few times that way we can hook up the metallic the emission and the roughness maps as well you might notice that we're not doing that for the normal map and that is because the normal map actually has a specific node for that and that is normal from texture so that's going to go into the normal tangent space then our metallic map is going to go into the metal then our emission map is actually going to go through a multiplication first so we're going to add a new parameter here and that's going to be a float and that'll be our emission power we'll simply take the output from our sample texture here and we'll multiply with our emission power and that's going to go into the emission slot itself and you'll note that things get very messy very quickly we'll clean this up in a second the roughness we're also going to have to do something with because most texturing softwares if you're working in blender or substance design or substance paint up that kind of stuff you're going to get a roughness map unity for some reason wants to use smoothness which is the opposite of roughness so out of this sample texture we're going to just invert the colors we'll invert all the channels red green and blue alpha doesn't really matter and that's then going to go into the smoothness that way you don't have to worry about inverting every texture you generate because the shader itself does that now all that boring stuff out of the way this is just normal like texture shader setup that you're going to have to do for almost every shader you make now we get to the interesting bit first things first we're going to go select the output here we're going to go into graph settings and in surface options we'll enable alpha clipping that adds a new output here for us to work with we're going to be using that in a second first things we want to do is add a simple noise you can use any kind of noise you want i personally like using the simple noise and i personally like setting this to a scale of 25 you can set this to a scale higher or lower depending on what you specifically need the output from that is going to go into a step node in the edge input and you'll see if we play around with the other input here that that creates our dissolving effect so that's going to have to be a parameter and that parameter will make a float and we'll just call that fade in of course spelling it correctly does help it's not important but you know that parameter is going to go into the other input for this and we'll set this by default at 0 0.5 just so that we have a good way of previewing what we were working with then we'll take that down a little bit and copy over this setup but we'll change it around a little bit because between this fade in and the step node we're actually going to add a addition node 
and we're going to add a very small number to this something like 0 0.05 that way this one is just a little bit further along in the dissolving than this one than the bottom one and that way if we subtract the top one in the top slot and the bottom one in the bottom slot we get this nifty little mask that is just the edges we'll then also go back and add a color parameter we'll just call that color and set that to being in the mode for hdr that way it can have a brightness beyond the usual 255 which is what we want because you probably want these edges to glow a little bit right so let's set the default value to some kind of light purplish color now we'll set the alpha clip threshold to being one so anything under a value of one is going to get clipped and then the alpha itself is going to come from the bottom of these two step nodes quick fix here i told you to use the wrong node you're going to use the top step node for the alpha instead and just like that you can see our preview it has holes in it now which is amazing you might notice though that you can't see the other side of the object which might be good might be bad that's a very much creative thing depending on what you want it to look like if you want to fix that you can come into the graph settings here and under double-sided mode we can simply say enabled now we can see through and see the other side with the back faces which makes the dissolving just feel a little bit more real we can finally take our color now and we can multiply that color with this line mask that we've just made and now those lines are just simply the color that we supply it with and we can put that into the emission outputs and now we'll see that we have this dissolving with the edges being the color that we provide so if we want this to be green instead it becomes a greenish color that's all fine and dandy but we don't have uh, the emission map now because we can only put one emission output and we've got the emission map and now we've got this emission as well and that that doesn't work together very well well luckily the solution is just simply adding them together so we add these two things together and then that is going to go into the emission output instead one quick note that i honestly didn't know myself until recording this video is that the base color map you probably shouldn't call base color because it gets confused between that and the actual base color so just call it bc instead for base color and that should fix any errors that you might be having regarding it getting confused with base color not having a value and if we now save this asset and we go back into our scene we want to make a new material so let's create a new material and call it fade in up here in the shader for that we'll use our newly made dissolve shader and we'll actually make a quick i don't know capsule to test this on put our fade in material on that capsule sometimes if you create a new material it's a little annoying with the alpha clipping and double-sidedness you can decide both of those on a per material basis by default it'll turn them off uh, so we'll want to turn those both back on and then we'll set a color let's make this one uh, a red color and we don't have an emission map so whatever but we want to set that by default to being one at the moment we don't see anything and that's a exposure related issue so i'll just turn off the sun real quick and now we should be able to see if we go back into our material and now if we say put this to a red color and make this a little bit brighter we'll be able to see that in fact we have our dissolving working more or less it's hard to see without the sun so let's turn the sun back on and just turn its brightness down a fair little bit here so that we can actually see what we're working with and now we can see the dissolving works pretty perfectly as we want it now little quality of life thing is this is at the moment a number and you're probably going to drive this mostly through code or animations anyway so it doesn't matter that much but we can come back here into our shader and get our fade in and change the mode from default 
So being a slider with a minimum value of zero, maximum value of one. And now if we save this asset, we'll be able to see that we have a slider here instead that we can use to slide between being dissolved and being non-dissolved. And if we drive up the intensity even more, it also starts to uh, to show some glowing, as we can see. So uh, that's with the sun turned off. So if we turn the sun back on again, we now see a very, very nice effect indeed. And you can fine tune and work with this however you like. So do experiment with this a little bit and try out what you want to try out. Again, if you just want to look around in the shader graph here that I have made, I'm going to make this a little bit more organized, and then I'll upload it to my Patreon for you to download if you want to look around in it. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.